Welcome back to Building Websites with Pytho Py Python and, and Django. Django. <laughs> I'm Christopher Harrison. Your coffee's right there. That's uh, Susan Ivac. My coffee is right here. Um, in any event, uh, in the uh, last module, Susan, you showed us some really neat tools for being able to create classes that's going to be our data and then use that to create the database. But how about the actual, um, you know, data? How do we actually work with, with, with the data without having to write the SQL manually? Yeah, absolutely. So that's definitely the next step. So all we've done so far is we've defined some models. Remember, models are just classes we created in our Python code. And then we used via ORM, or via Object Relational Mapper, to migrate that model to the database itself. So basically what we now have is classes inside our code and tables in our database but there's no data in this tables. And one of the things I, we promise is that Django would also help you with writing your queries, doing your insert and update statements. So that's what we're gonna try and demystify now is how do you actually start working with the models in terms of code, inserting new records, updating new records, and so on. So what I'm gonna cover in this particular module is I'm gonna show you how to create new records, how to update records. Then we'll get into some queries. Uh, we'll look at some very simple queries of like how do you get back a record where ID equals and then we'll get into more customized queries. And we are only going to scratch the surface here. When you get into custom queries, um, I used to teach SQL courses as well. And there was a three-day course on writing SQL uh, statements to do things like queries and so on. We could probably do a full one-day course on writing Python queries through the ORM in Django, uh, showing you all the different options and features. So we'll get you going with it so that you can write some basic queries and hopefully get used to the syntax so that when you want to do something more advanced, you can very quickly find that syntax and, and see how it applies. So we're going to get you up and running, get you to maybe like the 200 level, but you can go to the 300, 400 level. So we're just going to scratch the surface because um, I know you guys want to see things like the bootstrap, how to create the forms, mm -hmm. how to uh, put migrate, deploy this whole thing. So we want to make sure we get a chance to show you that as well. So. Um, Let's start with creating data. I want to, yes, Christopher, you pointed out, yeah, makes I got sense. no data in my tables. So I yeah. want to start adding some new artists, adding some new albums into there. So, so let's do that. Now, the great thing is, um, if you know, have ever done object-oriented coding, uh, if you know how to create an instance of a class, you know how to create a record. Because basically, remember, our class is our table. So when you create a new instance of the class, that's creating a new record in the database table. And the ORM is going to take care of taking that instance of a class and sending it to a database. Now, it's not just going to do that randomly and go, oh, you created an instance, I'll just move that to a database for you. You control when it sends that new record to the database by calling a method. So when you call the save method, that's your way of saying, hey, I've got a new instance here, please send that new record to the database. Or if you modify a record, you say, I've made a change, I want to send that change to, to the database, calling the save method is your way of saying, now is when I want to actually send that new record to the database. So how does that look in terms of code? Well, if we take a look here, what we end up with is uh, I have my artist class that I'd created. So I just say, all right, let's create a new instance of the artist class. And I just call the constructor method. So I say, all right, the value for the name is going to be artist name, whatever I type in. And the value for year formed is going to be whatever year it was formed. And then when I want to send that record to the database, so it actually inserts it into the table, I just call the save method. Now, some of you may be looking at that going, Susan, you never wrote a save method. And it's true. If we actually look at the code, there's nothing in here. There's no save method. Susan, you never wrote a save method. I never wrote. You're right. I'm glad you brought that up, Christopher. Um, but remember, when I created the artist class, I inherited from the model class. So that model class in the models package has the save method. So that's where that save method comes from. So I don't have to declare it here. I inherited that from the model class. So now to test this, to sort of show you how it works, um, the easiest thing to do is actually, um, you would be writing this code inside your web pages and the sort of the logic of your code. But I'm actually just going to open up a, a command window where I can just run some Python commands so we can do it interactively so that we don't get lost in the uh, navigating the structure of all the pages right now. We can focus in on literally how do we write that code that's going to interact the database, insert our record, query our records. So the way we do that is in Visual Studio, if you want to try this yourself, you go to your project and you right click the project and you pick Python Open Django Shell. And this basically gives you a shell where you can execute Python Django commands. So it's popping up here. And let's bring that up here so it's going to be a little easier to work with. 
There we go. So here's my shell. So I can go ahead and say, I want to create a new artist. And it's going to be an instance of the artist object. It is case sensitive, so we've got to be a little careful there. Uh, and it's an artist object. And uh, I'm going to go with my favorite band. Uh, I'm a big fan of Great Big C. <laughs> and Christopher's laughing because he knows I am inclined to burst into song at any moment uh, with songs by that band. And they say they were formed in, say, 1985, somewhere around there. So I run this command, and basically, whoops. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Forgot to import an artist. Right, this is, a, this is a blank shell. It doesn't know what the artist model is. So I just have to go to my application, whoops, um, import uh, from the app dot, it always does that the first time, <laughs> from app dot models, because remember this is in the models pot dot pi file of my app, so it's in app dot models. Uh, I want to import artist, and that's why it's going, hey, I've never heard of artist. So once I've imported that, then I can go ahead and create my new artist. Okay, so I've successfully created an artist, but right now that's just an instance of the object in my code. I need a way of saying, take that instance of the object. That is meant to represent a record in a database. Go do an insert statement in the database based on that. So what I do now is I call newartist.save, and that's that method I inherited from the model class. And it has now gone off and inserted that record in the database. And we'll see that in a little bit when we learn queries, because we'll actually do queries to get that record back. Um, so that's how you, that's it. Uh, I mean, look at all the incredibly long, complex code I wrote over here again. So over here on the left-hand side, you can see here's this incredibly complex code I used to define the data and the model and all the columns in the database that I migrated. And here's the incredibly complex code I wrote to create a record and insert it to the database. So I said, this is one of the reasons Django is so popular is because it's, if you're used to working with objects, this is very intuitive. You don't have to go off and learn all the SQL. Yep. It, ORM does it for you. Okay, let's pop back over to here for a second. Um, if you want to do an update statement, so we need to update an existing record, what you can do is once you have uh, an instance of the object that represents that record, change its property, because each property maps to a column in the database. So if you change one of the properties, in this case, uh, if we take a look here, you can sort of see we've got uh, the name property of our artist, and we change it to some new value. And when you want to send that updated value to the database, send an update statement to the database, once again, you're just going to call the save method. So if we try that and put that into practice, we just go over here and we go new artist dot uh, year formed. And we say, let's say that for that particular, because I have this instance new artist already, so I could just modify that record and say year formed is 1986 instead of 1985. And then I just say save, and the ORM is going to detect what's been modified on the new artist instant and send an update to the database with that change. Done. I've just done an insert and an update. And we don't have to worry at all about the database itself. It's just taking care of everything for us. Yeah, the save statement is basically telling the ORM, hey, take any changes, any new records, any updates to that record, send them off to a database. I like it. Yeah. Great for lazy coders. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Susan. <laughs> All right, so I've just uh, done that demo. Um, now, of course, I know as a lot of people going out there, you say it's saved, Susan. Yes. <laughs> but I'm not sure I trust you. You know, they've probably seen me do demos before and know they don't always go perfectly. So, all right, fair enough. And this is where I'm crossing my fingers, really hoping it did work so that the next command demo works, because if the first demo didn't work, I'm going to find out right now. <laughs> so this is my moment of truth. I'm now going to run a query to go to the database and say, hey, give me back that artist that I just inserted. So how do I do queries? How do you do queries? Mm. Well, um, we use the save method to send update and insert statements uh, to the database. The way we do queries is that model uh, that we inherited in our code. So again, coming back to the code itself here, just moving this out of the way. So once again, right, all the magic happens because we inherited this model class. We inherited the save method from that. We also inherited an extra property called objects. And the object's property is a collection of the records that are in the database, effectively. Mm -hmm. So when, when we want to do a query, we always work with the object's property. 
and it has its own methods that allow us to do queries. So we're going to go to artist.objects.filter, artist.objects.get, uh, artist.objects.get, artist.objects.filter. That's always going to be sort of our logic when we want to say, go get this record from the objects for artist. Go find these records from the objects of artist. So it's all about that objects property, which was added automatically because we inherited from the model class. So in terms of the code, how does it actually look? It's going to look something kind of like this. So if you take a look here, what you see is um, here's that artist.objects. That's the magic here. And said that was added automatically because we inherited from model. And this time I'm calling the all method, which, okay, Christopher, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. Uh oh. Take a wild guess at what the all method will do. I'm going to say it's going to get you everything. It's going to get you all the items. Download there we go. all the things. Download all the things, exactly. <laughs> so when we call the all method, basically it's going to go off and tell us all of the records stored in the database for the artist object. And then we put that into some sort of collection object like all artists. And then if you want to see the results of that, you could write a little for loop that says just go through all each artist inside all artists and then print out whatever property you're interested for, in this case, maybe the name. If you only want to get a single record back, well, you can do that as well because, again, we always start with that artist.objects, right? That's our property that allows us to access the records. And we call the get method and we ask it for one. Now, one of the things, what that is sort of doing is that's kind of, if you've done SQL, it's kind of like saying select uh, where uh, ID equals one. That's kind of what we're doing when we do a get statement. Yep. So because we specified a value of one, um, by default, that one is going to be the ID uh, if you just specify. I'm going to show you how to do it like where name equals in a second, but that's the default. So basically that's equivalent sort of saying select where ID equals one, and once you've got that record back, you can display it. So let's try that out. Because again, I think this is one that it makes more sense when you see it in action. So we've inserted a record to the database. So we should be able to say, get me back all records. So the way we do that is I say, I'm going to declare a variable called all artists to hold the results of the query back. And I have to go to the artist.objects method. And I love IntelliSense. It saves me making some typos. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start by doing the get me all objects back. And that basically, that method has now just executed. The ORM has taken that command, gone to the database, said, hey, somebody asked for all the artist objects. It's gone to the database table, done a select star from uh, this table, gotten all the records back, and populated uh, my all artist variable with every single record from the database. In this case, only one, but if you had 50 records, it would populate it with 50. So now, how do I prove that? Let's go back to our code. Um, I'm going to write a little for loop here. And, uh, well, actually, I could even do it this way. Um, it's a collection, so I could just say, get me the first record. So go to the first record and tell me what the ID is. And if I run that, it says the ID is one. And if I say from the first record, whoops, uh, get me the name, it says great big C. So you can see it, in fact, did bring back that first record, or if you want to see all the records, in this case there is only one, but again, you could still do the uh, for artist in all artists. Uh, don't forget your colon. I always have trouble with that in Python. I always forget my colon when I'm writing for loops. And I could say, and then uh, for each artist that you find, print out that artist name. And it comes back again. In this case, I only actually have one record, so there's only one that returns. But if I went off and created a second artist and saved that, it would retrieve all of them. Now, what if I only want to retrieve one record back? And I, because of course, if you really only want one record back, it's not very effective, efficient to say, go bring me back 6,000 records and then retrieve the one you want once it's all brought across the network to your code. If you know which record you want back, you know what its ID is, you can say, go get me the record with ID of one. So let's try that out in the code and see how that turns out. So for that, I just say uh, individual artist equals, and we always start with artist.objects. But instead of doing the dot all, we say just get the record one. And when you say get one, by, it assumes you want to get the record where the ID equals the value you pass in here. So that's basically your one. And whoops. Uh, I make actually I'm gonna do it this way. ID equals one, even simpler. There we go. ID equals one, and then we can ask for the artist dot name of the record, and it comes back and says the record with an ID of one is great big C.
So okay. I can ask for a particular one individual record, or I can just get all the records back and loop through them and process them. So mm -hmm. these are basically select statements. But I'm running against a database. The ORM is doing all the magic for me. Yep. I did not write a get method. I did not write a save method. I did not write a query method. I'm just using the built-in functionality of Django and ORM. So let's uh, let's do some more magic. There's got to be more we can do with this because. That's, you know, when I know as soon as you start getting to queries, you guys start going, well, what if I want to, well, what if I want this type of query? And, oh, wait, I, I, I want it to be case insensitive. And I know the Q&A window is going to light up as we start getting into queries here. And we can't cover them all. Um, but there's a lot of great documentation on it. But I will get into some slightly more advanced queries here. So we used the get method. Now, the thing about the get method is um, the get method is kind of like, if you've ever done uh, select statements in code, there's often a command called select into. And the way it works is it's only allowed to get back one individual record. If it returns more than one records, you actually get an error message. So you'll actually raise exceptions. If it returns no records, you'll get an exception back. So anytime you use the get method to retrieve a record from a database, if you get back zero records, it's going to throw an exception, something along the lines of no record found. I don't remember the exact exception it throws. Uh, if you retrieve more than one record, it returns an exception, um, something along the lines, lines of multiple records found. So if you are executing a query and you don't know if it's going to return zero records or 15 records, you know, if you're saying where ID equals, um, if that's your primary key, you should only get one record back. Uh, but <laughs> if you're saying get me all the um, albums by the artist Great Big C, you might get back 15 results. So in that case, we need a way of saying get me multiple records. So we have that dot all, which gets us everything. But what if I only want the records by Great Big C? I don't want a list of every single album in the albums table. I want only the records by Great Big C. So at that point, I'm, I'm doing sort of a where clause. Or I'm trying to filter out the results. But I'm still going to get back multiple results. So I'm going to get back 10 records. That requires using the filter method. So if you go back to the slide for a second, you'll see here there's another method we can use called filter. And that's the one we used to bring back the multiple objects. So important to know when to use each. And if you're using get, make sure you do your try except. I'm doing, channeling my inner Christopher here <laughs> by, uh, by, by <laughs> scribbling all over the screen. Yep. So make sure you do a try except to handle the exceptions of no record found and multiple records if you do use the get. You are going to notice we're not going to bother with, with try except just to try and keep things a little bit simpler. I mean, best practice, yes, put it in. We're not going to worry too much about error handling. No, not because, yeah, yeah. We're, just, uh, we're just trying to show you how it works. Exactly. Okay, so um, let's take a look at the syntax of how we use it. Um, if you want to not search by ID, but maybe you want to find the record where name equals something, it's actually very similar to syntax to what we did when we were searching by ID. Once again, we start with artist.objects. That's a constant. That's the same anytime you do a query. We are expecting, maybe I'm saying, get me information about the artist named Great Big C, and I expect that to only return one record. So because I expect it to return only one record, I can use the get method. And then instead of saying ID equals, I just simply say, get me the record where the name equals whatever the artist's name is. And that will work um, just fine. So you could be name equals, where year formed equals, whatever column you want to specify. And do, do, do. Uh, if the other one, and now this is where it starts getting cool. You can also do things like uh, you may have used in SQL world, you may have used something like Let's do this here. Uh, you may have tried something like select uh, where like um, something great percent. So maybe you've tried these sort of like statements, these idea of pattern matching in your where clauses. So you want to find things that start with the phrase great, but you don't know what it ends. So you know, great gobs of fire, uh, great big C, great, C, great expectations, and so on. Um, so what we can do is there is the ability when you use the uh, filter, and this of course could return multiple records. So I'm using filter this time instead of the uh, get. So again, always start with artist objects. I'm using filter because it could return more than one record. But instead of just saying name equals, I say name starts with equals great. So that uh, starts with is a clue, it's, it's a parameter I can specify when I call the filter method to say any name that starts with this phrase is a match. So that's like saying get me the records where the name is like 
great percentage and so on if you've played with SQL statements. So it allows me to do pattern matching in my search. Mm -hmm. And I do want to point out something really, really important in this slide. Important? Important in this slide. Important. Um, that is, whoop, two underscores. Hang on. That was nice. Yes, Jumping two back here. underscores. That is two underscores. That's name underscore underscore starts with. It's not always clear when you're looking at a slide, but that is actually underscore underscore there if it has been typed in. Um, and now, the other thing that you run into is our search is case sensitive. That comes up a lot of times in databases. Um, in Canada, we have our postal codes or zip codes, um, we call them postal codes in Canada, they have letters in them. Um, and you run into a lot of problems where when people are on a web page, they might enter the postal code in lowercase. Um, but we, when we're searching for it, sometimes we search for it and we don't know whether to search for uppercase or lowercase letters, so that causes problems. So sometimes we want to be able to do a search, and I don't care if you entered a lowercase k or an uppercase k uh, as long as it matches the letters, and I don't care if it's upper or lowercase. Any of these little tricks that you see, or these parameters you can specify, you have the option of specifying a letter i on the parameter, and it turns it into a case insensitive search. So if you take a look at the uh, slide here, you can actually see that I do the starts with, so I, again, first part's always the same, artist.objects, I'm using the filter because I could get back multiple records, and I'm doing the name starts with, with two underscores, but you'll also see that little letter I there, and that turns this into a case insensitive search. So if I entered great big C with lowercase letters, this would return a match, whereas the previous one would not. Um, there's other ways to do this too. What if you were doing an exact match? You're not doing this pattern matching. Uh, well, you can do that as well. To another great example here. If you take a look at, again, always starts with same. Hopefully this is starting to look familiar. It starts with artist.object. Um, and if you're doing a get, you're expecting to get back one individual record or only get me the record. You can do this with filter or with get. Um, you've got the get and you say name equals artist name, you're like, well, how do I make that into a case insensitive search? You can do it because you can, these two commands are actually exactly the same. The only difference is here I say name underscore underscore exact instead of name equals. The advantage to using this name underscore underscore exact syntax is the fact that I can add an I if I want to right here and that turns it into a case insensitive search and is actually an example of that on the next slide. So you can see here that I can just add that I to turn this into a case insensitive search as well. So lots of options here. So let's go try a, a couple of different queries here for some examples to sort of show you some more complex queries inside our, our code that we have here. So what we'll do is first let's do a sort of get me the record. Instead of searching by ID, let's search for the record where name equals instead of where ID equals because that comes up a lot in your code. You never know exactly which column you're going to be searching by. So I might say, uh, searching it by name, uh, the name of the artist uh, is artist dot, oops, dot objects. That's always going to be the same. I'm only expecting one record back with the name great big C, so I can use the get and get me the record where name equals great big C. How do I know it worked? Well, I can just print out the result and just say, what's the value of name artist dot name? And sure enough, it comes back with that. Or if I wanted their ID value, or I wanted to know the year they were formed, year formed, any property I want, you can see that whole record came back. Oh, uh, name dot artist dot year formed. Uh, oh, name dot artist. That would do it. The, the field is called name oh. artist <laughs> year formed. Must be uh, getting close to uh, to a meal time. I'm starting to uh, to make more typos <laughs> in my code. And as we all know, the number of typos you make is directly proportional to the number of people watching you type. Exactly. So the more of you watch... Everybody the close their browser window. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Stay. 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 I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. So what if I want to retrieve multiple records back? Let's try that filter, um, which allows us to retrieve multiple records. So I might say, uh, execute a, uh, get a list of query artists. And uh, we always start with artist. I seem to have this obsession with an uppercase R. Must be because my talk like a pirate day tendency is going R. Yeah. <laughs> uh, artist objects, filter. And when we do the filter, we say get me all the records where year formed equals 1986. And if there were 10 bands 
from that year, this would still execute successfully. It won't throw any exceptions because the filter, remember, can handle re return multiple records. Um, to get the results back, you could write a nice little loop in query artists. And then each time through the loop, just say print the name of each artist. So that, again, in this case, I only have one record of a table, so I'm only seeing one result back. But if there were 10 bands, this would list off all the bands who were, had the year formed in 1986. So that's kind of like saying select star from artists where year formed equals 1986, if you think in terms of SQL or if you've worked with SQL already. If you've never worked with SQL, you don't have to learn it because Orm's <laughs> doing it for you. Yep. You just need to learn how to call these different properties uh, or set these different parameters to control the data you want back. Um, another one I just want to mention, uh, because you, it may come up, is you may be going, well, what if I want the records where year formed equals and country of origin equals? So how do I do like an and statement or something like that to combine? Uh, the way you do that is just to sort of show you the logic is after the dot filter, you just add another dot filter statement. So I would add uh, country equals uh, Canada. So you can do that as well. Um, you can even say, uh, there's another way of, I won't execute this because I don't have a column with country equal to Canada. Another one you can do is kind of cool is there's also the ability to say accept um, as well. I think it's accept. Uh, it's something like that. And exclude. Exclude, thank you. Because um, yes, accept is usually an exception. Yeah. Um, you Except can say exclude yeah. uh, country equal Canada. So I want to know all the bands that were not from Canada that were formed in 86. So, and then you can add another filter afterwards. So this is how you combine all kinds of different conditions together. You just keep adding more dot exclude, dot filter, dot filter. And that's how you have multiple conditions on a query if you want to. So just wanted to mention that because it's something that sometimes comes up. Um, trying to think of some other neat ones. Let's, um, oh, we got the foreign keys? I think we should show that. Yes. Yeah, all right. One more thing I want to show you. This is, this is cool. Because you haven't had an error yet. Yeah, well, no, I have one. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Typo. <laughs> all right, there's one more thing that's really cool uh, that I absolutely love about this as Susan the Lazy Coder. When I uh, taught a lot of SQL statements and select statements, and we work with relational databases, the data is often spread across multiple tables. So the artist information is in the artist table. The album information is in the albums table. If I want a list of album names, uh, all the albums by a particular artist, then what you would have to do is you would have to query both the tables and join that data back together using what we would call SQL join statements. And trying to explain to somebody who's never done SQL before how you write these join statements that combine the data from table A with the data from table B and bring that all back together, that was, took pretty much, I would say, you used to teach SQL, Christopher. I mean, that was a good solid hour, wasn't oh, it, yeah. really? And even after the hour, people were kind of like, I think I get it. Right. So it's one of those concepts that frequently throws people off. Orm does it for you. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it. You, you don't have to worry have about to, joining you're not write. You're not going to yeah. have to write join statements. Cool. Um, so because remember how when we created the artist and the albums, we made that foreign key between artist and album. You remember we did that? Mm -hmm. um, so Django already knows that the Artist, which artists go with which albums. So all we have to do is say, it, we call it like a parent, people think of it as like a parent-child relationship. You know, each artist has multiple albums. We might think of artists as the parent and albums as the child. You can literally say, go get all the children for, um, by just saying, you know, follow that relationship. Just go get me those records. So this is really cool. So the way we do that inside Django is you basically can walk this relationship chain, walk your foreign keys um, by following that relationship we created, as long as you made a foreign key between the two objects, you can just go ahead and again, you look at the syntax and you wouldn't even know you're doing a foreign key search here. You still go ahead, you still call album.objects. You know you're gonna, you may get multiple records back, so we're doing filter rather than get. And then I just say, get me the record where artist name is, and you specify an artist name. But here's what's interesting about that, is artist name is not stored under albums. If we actually, Go and look at the, the uh, class we created here. There is no artist name here. We have the album name, but we don't have the artist name. We said, however, there would be an artist, and that for artist, there is a name field. Mm -hmm. So basically, when you look at the syntax here, what you're really seeing here is this is saying the field artist, and then again, this is two underscores on that artist, look at that artist's name property, 
and get me the record where the artist's name property is artist name. Again, very careful, that's got to be two underscores or it's not going to work. So let's try that out because I think that's really one of the coolest things about Django is this is, uh, this comes up all the time in your code. You have all the orders for a customer, all the albums for an artist. You have all the items that somebody ordered that you have to track together. So this sort of idea of get me all the uh, orders for a customer, that's, that sort of parent-child foreign key comes up all the time. So the ability to just say, hey, just go get them, and all you do is in syntax say, I just need the artist name equals, and it finds it through the foreign key is great. So to do it, um, I'm going to have to import the... Uh, albums here because we haven't actually uh, added the album class to this little window we're working in here inside our shell. So we better import album so it knows how to use the album class. And right now I don't actually have any album records so I'm going to insert a couple of new records to the album database. So I got a flashback now and remember how to do my inserts. To do that I create a new instance of the album class and I'm going to be a little shortcut on my code here. I could just, I could say new album equals album and I can do this, and then I can call new album.save, but I'm going to do a little shortcut here. I'm just going to go straight to the constructor of the album class, and I'm going to say create a record where name equals up. That's uh, one of the albums. And the artist is a uh, new artist, because we do have a variable, uh, an instance already called new artist, which points to great big C, so that saves me having to set all that up already. And, and, then, and the only reason new artist works is because you had created that's that. That's right. Yeah, yeah, great. If we go way back up here, remember, we created an instance of an object <laughs> called time new ago. artist with the name great big C. So I'm just taking a bad, because otherwise I would have to write a query to go get the record of the artist I wanted it to point to and then use that here. So I'm just taking advantage of the fact that I already have an instance of an object that points to great big C. And so I specify new artist. And then I can just say, as soon as you create that instance, save it to the database. And I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, artist equals new artist dot save. Name equals up. Oh, yeah. You were supposed to get an error there. Uh, not yet. Shouldn't blow up until I'm, uh, I'm just trying to insert. Okay. That shouldn't blow up just yet. Artist dot save album name equals up. Artist equals new artist. And I think that's correct, and save. Uh, just going to make sure I have the casing all right on that. It is new artist. Yeah, that's correct. There we go. Here's my, uh, my blow up of the day. Couldn't get this far without something blowing up. I'm going to take a quick look at the error message. App album has no column named artist ID. So we run a migration just in case. Sure, we can do that. That's going to require going over here. All right, so this is the live debugging with the Python Django MVA. Uh, let's go here. Shouldn't make any difference now. Do 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 Python. Python. Uh, do you want to rerun the migration? Or? Uh, yeah. So manage. Uh, just say manage pi. Manage dot pi. Um, uh, just we do the make migration uh, first, or uh, just, we might as well. Eh? Just try migrate. Just try migrate. Try just doing the migrate. All right, we'll yeah. try that. Do to do to do. Migrate. Synchronizing, no migrations to apply. Your models have changes that are not reflected in a migration. So oh, okay. Applied. Yeah, so you will need hmm. to, to remake must, a migration. Yeah, I'm going to rewrite the migration just to make sure that the database reflects the structure I think I have. So yeah, let's yep. do that. Python manage.py make migrations dash dash name please work uh, app. app. Okay. I am trying to add a non-nullable field artist to an album without a default. Uh, you can't do that. The database needs something to populate existing rows. This uh, is interesting. Just provide a one-off value. So just hit one. Uh, yes. Set a default. So I should have obviously I should have specified a default value when I defined that uh, yeah. column. Yep. All right. And so now let's do the migration. Work. Actually, uh, let's you, redo you need the to make provide a value. Yeah. So this is this is your sample value. Oh, enter the default now as value of the date time uh, time zone now. Um, it's a date time. Huh. Why do I have a date time field? Uh, I didn't think I had any date time fields. Excuse me. I'm a little confused here. Positive integer field, char field, ID field. Uh, just give it a value. Just type in a number one. Okay. Do, do, do. We'll try that. Uh, I'm just worried. There we go. All there right. Go. So it's adding the field artist to album. 
which it did need. You know, it's funny. Somebody brought up in the Q&A that they didn't notice the foreign Kita artist on the sequel yeah. statement. So maybe you maybe you spotted that there. Um, good eye. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't looking for that. I was just looking at the create table statements. Um, and now let's do our Python uh, manage dot pi migrate to migrate those changes. Okay. There we go. All right. Now, now, now let's go here and see if it will successfully let me create that new album. Yay! There we go. Okay. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> You're welcome. You have, you, have, you have earned your cookie for today. Yeah, we, except we care. Like, no, we'll five, figure something out. Five, I don't know. It's all good. Uh, you, you have earned your cookie, sir. Uh, all right. Yay. All right. So now we can go out a second album. Um, not said. That's, that's very odd that uh, it didn't create it on the first time. And now we create a second album, See of No Cares. And the artist is that same artist. Dot save. Okay. And so now we've created two albums by that artist. So now we should be able to do one of those foreign key queries where we say, uh, go get me all the albums where the artist's name is Great Big C. I said, and the most important thing to realize, right, is nowhere in the albums class is there an artist name field. It's this foreign key that's going to allow me to search by artist name, even though artist name is in artists and I'm querying albums. That's the kind of neat thing. That's where the magic of Django comes in. So I can go ahead and now I should be able to say, okay, list of albums equals always starts the same, going to the objects property, doing a filter because I, as opposed to a get, because I'm expecting multiple records back, and get me the record where in the artist, double underscore, the name property, so I'm pointing to the name property of the artist class, well, I'm going to the artist of album, but I'm asking for the name property of the artist, equals great big C. And now this, the good news is, I was expecting this one. <laughs> Big nasty error messages all over the place. You know, sometimes those pop up and you're like, ah, oh, Susan, it bombed on you. But there's times when we're like, no, we this one yeah. we do. Yeah, this one this one we expected. <laughs> although I, I like Danny's immediate instinct was, oh, it blew up, let's let's not show yeah, that on the screen. I love that. That was great. Yes, I do have to thank Danny here in the studio for, for very kindly the moment the error message went spewing all of my screen, going, it better save her by going back to video, because sometimes we don't expect these messages. But actually we can bring this one back up. Um, this big nasty thing is basically just popping up. Um, sometimes um, there's certain setups um, when you're, especially when you're working in this shell, uh, parts of a Django setup that aren't completely loaded that allow the foreign keys to work. So there's just an extra little command I have to run. Uh, I'm going to have to just import Django, uh, import Django, and run Django dot setup, and that's going to just set up the components that aren't in this Django shell that allow the foreign key to work. And once I've done that, now this time if I get big nasty error messages, Danny, that'll be your cue to. Uh, Show Christopher right away, smiling and waving, um, if there's error messages when I run it this time. <laughs> but we're good. Okay, so we run it. Nice goes to a prompt, so it's apparently executed successfully. How do I know it worked? Well, I check the results. So I can say, okay, for each album in the albums that I just got back, um, let's print the album name. And I should see listed all the albums. There's up and see of no cares, but two albums for that artist. Beautiful. So that's effectively a join statement in Django with one line of code. That's it. Happy land for lazy coders <laughs> is what it comes down to. And I believe that sort of takes us through to the end of a, another module. It, I mean, it, we've done some pretty powerful queries. Sort of does. Yeah. I actually want to kind of go back and do um, uh, a spin on, on, on the demo that you just did. Oh, sure. Um, so here's what happened is uh, Susan just walked you through um, how to actually create and then query back data by utilizing uh, the, uh, the, the Django ORM APIs, which is wonderful, and that was mm -hmm. the, the exact goal. And then somebody in the uh, chat window said, hey, how about, and, and you can actually cut to my screen here, I've, I've, I've got it up, how about using the DB browser or SQLite and showing us the database? And oh, I went, sure. Hey, that's a great idea. Let's go ahead and, and do that. So I uh, went ahead in the uh, background here and then I you know, created that, that same exact very complex structure that, uh, that you created. Um, and uh, I've now opened up the, um, uh, the database. Um, and so what you'll notice here is that I've got my um, um, app album and app artist. Uh, those are the two tables in, uh, in question here. And so you'll notice that if I go to um, app album and I hit refresh, that right now I, I have no data. So if I go to Visual Studio here and let me 
do the exact same thing. A lot of people have been asking, how do we get to that Django shell? Mm -hmm. So again, it's right click on the project, go to Python, and then open Django shell. There we go. And so now what I could do, and I'm just going to shortcut this, I'm just going to say um, artist, and I'm going to say name equals uh, the cure, um, showing our, our music tastes here. Um, and we'll say year formed equals, and I think it was 1978. Um, there we go. And then we'll go ahead and uh, call your age. save. There's that too. Um, and. Oh, you haven't imported. Uh, oh, you're right. You Thank you. To import artists. From app um, import. App.models, um, I think artists. you may have to specify. Yeah, you're right. Uh, models. There we go. Um, Thank you. There we go. Yeah, I'm trying to kind of move a little yep, quick yep, here. Yeah, no, I understand. Yeah, and so now you'll notice that I've, I've, I've saved that. And now if I come back over here to my database, sure enough, there's the. There's the data. So you will notice that it is, in fact, updating the, uh, the, the database behind the scenes. Um, by the way, this, this DB browser for SQLite is a very simple uh, little tool to, uh, to use. If you um, uh, just fire up Bing, do a search for DB browser, um, you'll find it. And then you'll notice that you can just hit open database and then navigate to the, um, uh, to the directory that, uh, that that happens to be in. And then obviously uh, you'll notice that you could go in and just refresh and then that will show you all of the data right there. So there it is actually being saved uh, behind the scenes. So Susan showed off everything that you're typically gonna have to do uh, uh, when from you're using Django. Yeah, from a code perspective. And what I love about all the demos that you did was the fact that you didn't actually do anything directly with the database. Because I don't have care. to. Yeah, you didn't care where the database was, what the database was. So, but just to kind of prove that, yes, it is in fact saving yeah. inside the uh, inside Yeah, it's the nice to see yeah. that. You know, sometimes you're sitting and going, I think it's populating a database yep. behind the scenes. and Or sometimes you're running a query and you can't get a match and you're like, is that because the record doesn't exist or because right. I'm running my query wrong? So it's nice to sometimes be able to look at the original table and look at the records and go, no, the record's there. So now I know it's yeah. my query that's giving me trouble. Exactly. So that yep. absolutely is very helpful. Yeah. Great suggestion. And, yeah. Uh, thank very you cool. to whoever Yeah, I can't remember who it was, but yeah, gold star for the day. Awesome. Um, in any event, I don't know about you and I don't know about everybody that's watching, but I'm hungry and we're going to make this all about me. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a meal break and we'll be back in, uh, in about an hour. See you soon.